Hello everyone. This is your girl, um, Nefertiti. I wanted to come on and be transparent with you all. So come on in. Um, let's get started. I um, haven't been on here in a few weeks, but I did want to speak to you all in reference to some things that I had to endure because I know that this word is for somebody. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Ruth. Um, I am super excited because I wanted to be transparent and this is something that I normally do not do, but I did want to state this because I know this, this is some, some things that people are enduring, they're going through and they're trying to, um, to overcome. So let us get started and we can move from here. Um, I, um, always want to be transparent with people and I'm known for that. I'm known for being transparent. I'm known for having a word um, and, and always trying to keep it real with people. So I wanted to share something with you all because I want you all to walk in the fullness of what God has called you to, right? So I'm looking at two different screens. I'm looking at Facebook. Y'all already know what it is. Hey, my people um, or God's people. Uh, it's your girl Nefertiti. Hey, cuz. Hey, Siobhan. Um, seen a couple of my family members on here, and I am on YouTube. YouTube, you are an extraordinary um <laughs> kind of kind of group, and I just wanted to tell you, hey, this. I just wanted to to share some things with you all. So, my name is um, Nefertiti. I did want to share this. Yes, I am a ordained licensed minister. So I don't talk about that often because um, I don't not I don't like titles. I'm not onto titles. I just want people to know that I am somebody that's sold out for God. I have been an ordained um, minister for the past five years. So <laughs> this is nothing new. I just don't go around like, Hey, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Unless it's um, involving other people, but a lot of people already know. So I'm going to be transparent with you all. We're going to go into it because I want you all to know what's been going on. Um, or what has happened to me since you all, uh, for those who know me have last seen me or intertwined with me. If you, um, ever, um, dealt with me before if you was raised with me I want y'all to know what's, what has happened and what continues to take place right so um the Lord today the Lord was dealing with me um to talk to people because we have so many people that are experiencing so many things and he put this song on my heart called the potter's wheel you know um and it's when you um first and coming to God you go through a transition of a lot of different things. So let me start back off. Let me start off by saying this. I was a youth that faced homelessness. I had seven different families. I talk about this all the time. It's in my book for you all who know my book. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But um, I was blessed enough to have different people to come to me. So I'm going to share this with you first. When you go and when you give your life over to God, you begin to experience a lot of different things. And a lot of people think when they first come in, hey, Ace, how you doing? Um, a lot of people think when you first come into God that your life is going to be perfect. Everything going to be good. You ain't going to have to fight the things that you have to fight with because you are trying to cleanse yourself or you're trying to come into a better relationship or place in God. But that is the complete opposite. What you usually um, face is opposition. And let me share why. Because this world has built us up to believe certain things oh my god is that my daughter tamika okay no not that daughter that's a schoolmate um you when god brings you into his kingdom he has to retrain you and do certain things i'm gonna read a couple scriptures with you all hey love we, i'm gonna read a couple scriptures with you so you can understand where i'm coming from and then you will be able to understand what it is that you're going through right so um so, okay, I'm going to read this scripture because it it means a whole lot. So this is coming from the book of Jeremiah. I'm going to go to 18, 1 through 6, and then I'm going to read another scripture a little bit later, right? So 
It says, the word which came from Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will make you hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and saw that he was working at a wheel. But the vessel that he was making from clay was spoiled by the potter's hand. So he made it over, reworking it and making it into another pot that seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does? Says the Lord, look carefully as the clay is in the potter's hand. So are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So why did the Holy Spirit give me that? The Holy Spirit gave that to me because a lot of people feel as if they're going experiencing some things just when it seems like you're trying to get your life together. Just when it say, I want to give my life over to the Lord. It's all these things that just begin to come up and try to throw you off task, try to make you feel like you like you used to feel. And God said, "Is no, now you're in my hands and now I'm going to reshape you. Now I'm going to remake you. Now I'm going to make you over. So it hurt a little bit because when God is doing the thing, it does not feel good all the time. But as long as you continue to say, I'm going to hold on to your unchanging hand, Lord, I'm going to believe you for things things that I never ever dreamed or imagined but I know that it hurts right now and that's what your father is saying some things is hurting in you right now but I'm making you over I'm making you new as I was stating I um used to be a, a youth that faced homelessness and in that when I first came to God he had to show me he had to show me how to become this new pers pe person right and so he had to deliver me from the, 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 the spirit of abandonment because you who all know abandonment, you end up having issues. And God didn't want me to take that into my future. He said, if you're going to end up being able to help somebody else, I'm going to have to deliver you from abandonment. Then he, I, I had to deal with rejection. So how do you get re, uh, uh, delivered from rejection? You get delivered from rejection through rejection because your faith has to shift from off man onto God. I'm talking to you right now. I'm letting you know the things that has been taking place. You may feel as if it's been excruciating, but God got you on that wheel and he's the potter. He says, I don't know if y'all remember the song where it says he, he has the whole world in his hands. Don't you know that you're in his hands? If you believe in God, if you trust what God is doing, then he has some stuff for you. He's trying to build you up and make you new. He's trying to show you the way in him. He said, I know the world showed you some things. I know, I know it taught you, the streets taught you how to live and be about that life. But how about I'm trying to show you how to be about me? I'm trying to show you how to represent my kingdom. I'm trying to show you how to love on people past your pain, past their pain. I'm trying to take you to new levels in, in, in me. He said, I'm trying to show you how to walk this thing called life out, but in my kingdom. So it's going to take you being on the wheel for a little bit so I can cut those edges off of you. I can, I can remold you. I can remake you. I can turn you into that person that you desire to be because some of us know and realize that something was missing. It was a greater cause that was calling us to. And, and what that was is he was calling us into his kingdom. He said, I want to show you how to walk like me. I want to show you how to talk like me. I want to show you how to be like I want you to be who I called you to from the beginning of the earth. Before you was even born. He, he said, I created you in the of your mother's womb and I have special plans for you. And it's it's of good and not of evil and, and to bring you to an expected end. That's what our father is saying. So again, he had to take me to a place. I gave my life over to the Lord and then I began to go through things. And no matter how long you've been in God, you're going to have to go under some problems. You're going to have to go under some uh, pain. You're going to have to, because God is like, 
If not, then you're going to try to do things your way. If not, you're going to become arrogant. If not, then you're going to think that I'm just supposed to do that. And you will have that entitlement spirit like some of these kids have on people. If not, then you're going to be walking around thinking that everything's supposed to go the way that you think it's supposed to go. Instead of you submitting unto my will. Instead of you believing me for what I said. Instead of saying that I got to trust God no matter how hard it hurt. No matter what it looked like. I got to say yes, Lord unto your will and yes unto your way. So I started off talking about how we get on the potter's wheel when we first give our lives over to God. Now I'm going back and I'm going to I'm going to speak some things. So yes, I went through a transition. Um I went through a transition of God delivering me from abandonment. He delivered me from rejection. Now this thing, this thing right here, this takes some years to get delivered from, right? It's called people loving. I, I love people, but sometimes our uh, allegiance be more on man than it do be on God. Sometimes we want to we wanna get man's approval before we get God's approval. Sometimes we want to say, look, look, I, I, I just want to be like because I experienced some of these things. So I was I was delivered from rejection. I was delivered from um pain. I was delivered from, you know, the different things that I had experienced. But now I had to get a renewing of the mind because without your mind being renewed, then you're going to continue to do things the old way. And it's just like you regurgitating. What does regurgitating mean? Regurgitating mean you going back and eating throw up. Your own throw up. Nasty. But it is the truth. Because when God has delivered, when you threw that thing up, that means it didn't supposed to stay there. It was supposed to be where it was. But like dogs do, when they, they go and regurgitate, they'll go back and eat they throw up. Don't go back. But it's a process and you have to continue to say, yes, God, I'm here. Yes, God, I feel you. Yes, God, it don't feel right, but I gonna continue to believe you. Yes, God, I'm going to say yes unto your will and yes unto your way. Yes, God, I believe that you're doing exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think. But, yo, I didn't have the Bible, the word in me that good at that time. So I'm just like, Lord, Daddy, I need you to help me because I, I know I can't do this thing on my own. I just told him how good he was to me. Father, you are the great I am. You are, you are just so awesome. You, you, There's nobody that's like you, Lord, and I need your help. I can't do this thing on my own. I cried out to my father. But in this moment, as some people are being delivered from people, and bringing God is bringing his allegiance back to him. What do you think that you have been experiencing during this COVID time? It gave us time to spend time with family, spend first and foremost to spend time with God. During this pandemic, God wanted to bring us closer to him so he can build us up in spirit and in truth. What's the truth? The truth is his word is the truth. What's the truth? That you are who he said he, he, he claimed you to be. What's the truth? The truth is... That we're in the end times and are we going to submit unto the things that he said? This may be a hard word for some of y'all, but I'm telling y'all that I know that things can be um, a little excruciating right now. So going into this, this is where I'm leading to, right? When God delivered me from all of those different things, then he said, now I can build on you. Now you can step into your purpose. Now you're not going to go back and try to get revenge off of people because I got this. This is my world. You are my child. I got this thing. But you're going to have to stand still for a minute. That means you're going to have to endure some pain. That means you're going to have to say, God, I know it hurts, but what else can I do? I'm just going to continue to give myself over to you. I'm going to stand in surrendering to you because you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. And I can't trust my, how I feel because it might be up one day and down the next day. I can't trust what other people is in my ear yappity yapping. I got to believe what you said, what your word said. And when it don't feel good, I got to get into the word. And when it don't look work good, I got to get on my knees. And when it don't feel good, I got to surrender and, and worship God. I am coming to tell you that that the father has some great things in store for you. But how are you going to receive it? You're going to receive it by being obedient to him. You're going to receive it by talking to him every day. You're going to receive it by laying on your face before God and saying, Lord, cleanse my heart. 
I want to be a living vessel in front of you. I want to stand on your truth. I want to believe you for things that I didn't have the faith to believe you for. But Lord, your word says that you will take us to deeper depths and higher heights in you. That's what your word say. But if you don't know the word, how are you going to say it back to him? Because when he hears his word, oh my God, he just stops and listens and says, what's going on? My child was speaking. That's what he does when his kids, his children speak to him. But when you come back and you speak the life, when you come back and speak his word, you're reminding him like, Lord, I ain't just talking just because I want to get out of this thing. I'm reminding you of your promises. I'm reminding you of your word. Your word cannot lie. You are the truth the, in the light. You cannot tell a lie. You are not a man that you shall lie, nor a son of man that you shall repent. So I'm bringing back to you what you said in your word. Father, I believe you for the things that you're doing. And that's how you got to talk to your father, right? So I came to on here to talk to you about this. So <laughs> I know it seemed like I, I was where I was, but I spoke some things, right? What are your streets? What are your streets? My book, my book. Ever evolving from the streets to the palace. This book is talking about how we all have to endure some things to get to that next place. This book is talking about how we have all had experienced some type of pain in some type of way because God brings you into his kingdom. If you have not had to endure something, then how would you know that he is Alpha and Omega? How would you know that he is the beginning and the end? How would you know that he is Jehovah Jireh, the one that provides? How would you know who he is if you don't know who he, if you don't, if you don't go through some things, right? Because when you're in that place of pain, you get on your knees and you seek him more. That's what we was all doing when this pandemic first hit. We was on to it. We was on We was on, 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 on fire for God. We was all praying. We was all on one accord. We was all seeking God's face. But then we began to back up. Like, oh, wait, Lord. It's nice outside. Now I want to go outside instead of saying, oh, Lord, I want to get in your face. Every day I ask the Lord, I said, Father, do not allow me to go back into bad habits that you had delivered me from. I want to be, continue to stand on what you said. I want to continue to seek you the way that I was seeking you when we was in that place of pain. I want to know. Listen, I want to worship you like I was when I was sick and barely could breathe. I want to continue to worship you like that. I want to continue to move forward in you. And that's how we have to be. We have to be caught up, wrapped up in his love and his grace and his mercy. So what I was going from, I asked you, what are your streets? Are you an individual that don't um, get along with people or have had to experience some of the things that I experienced through rejection, through pain, through, 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 through different things? The enemy will even try to put depression on us. If you don't know whose you are, then you won't know who you are. You have to seek God to see who you are in this season because you're not who you was back then. Who are you now? Who did God build you up to become? That is what God is saying to you in this very moment. He's asking you, who are you now? What are your streets? What did you have to endure? What pain are you believing God to get you? What are you believing God for in this hour? Because we can be like kids sometimes and get one thing and be out with our hand out the next day. God is saying that it is time. Yeah, you're right, Ruth. It is time for you to submit unto his way. Come back and bring to them. Write the vision down and make it plain. Let him know the things that is in your heart. Talk to your father. He is a good father and he's better than people. He is not like man. He's not going to switch it up. So this is the, uh, the ending scripture that God brought to me. It's, it's Genesis 50, 19 and 20. And I'm going to read this in the NIV version. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Let me break that down to you. 
Some people may have came up against you. Some people may have talked about you. Some people may have hurt you. They meant it for evil, but God was always working it for your good. This book, he birthed out of struggles. This book, he birthed out of pain. Then he brought me into a new space to be able to help people, to know, to, to have a heart for people, to not be always stuck on what I'm going through and to be able to pray for other people with the fervency as if I was praying for my, praying for myself, praying for my loved ones because I love people, but he had to deliver me over the allegiance to man, to the allegiance to God. Are you believing God to bring you to new spaces in him? Are you trusting the process that it is working for your good? Are you believing him to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask or think? God is good. If you're feeling some pain, just know that you're on the potter's wheel. If you're going through some things, just know that you are on the potter's wheel and God is making a new vessel. I don't look like I used to. And if I do... It's only because you should see something different in me. You should tell who is really in God because people can talk about God all day, all, all day, but their hearts be far uh, away from God because their fruit shall show. Your fruit shall show. Don't be up here one day talking and judging people and then be down here. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about in how we treat people. We supposed to love everybody, but first you may need to see God to deliver you from some things. If you're on the potter's wheel, know that it's working for your good. If you're surrendering to God, know that it's working for your good. If you're believing him for some things, know that it is working for your good. Romans 8 and 20 said, 8, I always quote this scripture because this is something that I have to continue to remind myself and remind others. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things are working together for the good of them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. Who is his? God, his purpose. But do you know that? It started off saying, and we know. If you don't know that, then you won't have the reassurance. You won't have the assurance that it's working for your good, but you got to know it. Get into the face of God. If you need to close that door, turn the phone off, spend a half an hour. You can scroll on social media for a half an hour. Close your door for a minute. Get into God's face. Turn off the television. Turn off the, turn off, turn off the radio. Turn off, turn the phone off for 30 minutes. And give it to God. Let us go before the throne of grace. I pray that this has blessed you. God is so amazing. Um, I would not be who I am without his love. Without me being on that wheel. For him to deliver and bring me to new spaces and places in him. I am growing in God. And you are too. But only if you're continuing to, to surrender. So Father God we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Giving thanks unto you oh God. We're thanking you for life. We're thanking you for strength. We're thanking you oh God. That you delivered a word to your children today. You wanted them to know that the pain that they have been enduring it was not for evil that you had expected in. Oh God that you had something in store for them that you wanted to show them that it's a reason why you had to go through this and it was for me to take you to that new space. You had to endure it because I needed to break some things off of you. I needed to mold you in a different way. I needed to show you that you're in my hand. Father we're asking that you continue to give us the strength, the fortitude, and to, to continue to move forward, oh God, to continue to speak life, oh God, not to give in to our emotions, not to give in to what it looked like, not to get in what it seemed, not to give in to what it feels like, oh God, but to continue to trust you, oh God, continue to keep our eyes stayed on you, which come in our help. The heels, oh God, is what you call it. But I'm saying, if we keep our eyes on you, oh God, then everything else will fall off, oh God, let the other names fade away. Hallelujah. Because you are a great God. You are a mighty God. You are a forgiving God. Lord, we have done some things, but Lord, you are capable to throw them in the lake of fire, oh God, if we repent unto you. So Father, I am repenting for myself. I cannot repent for other people, but some of them, I feel their hearts 
They're in a space where they want to get closer to you, but they don't know how. They don't know that they can just, just start talking to you because it feels a little silly at first until you get into that space, until they feel your love embrace them, oh God. Father, we're asking that as you take us to new places and spaces in you, oh God, that you will continue to give us the fortitude, oh God. Continue to love us on ways that we can never be loved on. Man can't love us like this. Woman can't love us like this. Our mama can't love us like you can. Our fathers can't love us like you can. Not even our children. Hallelujah. So Lord, as you continue to show us the way, sway us with your love. Syncopate our hearts, oh God, so we can be on one accord with you, so we can come to you and sing in your harmony and your grace. We can come to you oh God saying holy, holy, holy we serve the great I am oh God and it ain't nobody like you father. You are the first and the last. You are the beginning and the end. You are the which was which is and which is to come. Father you are good. You are our source. You are our supply. You are our surplus oh God and we will trust in you oh God. Now, Lord, for those that are not understanding what's going on with them, give them revelatory insight. I pray that this word touches the masses. Father, we love you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our souls. We need to turn our hearts back unto you because our allegiance should not be to man. Our allegiance should be towards you and only you. You are a jealous God. And we hear you. Thank you, Father, for your love. It endures forever. Your love is is it is irrevocable. Your love is irrevocable. Your your grace, oh God, only you can give it. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for being who you are, mighty. You never fail. You never fail, oh God. You're always beautiful in everything that you do. You're just, oh God, and your word is good. You are good. And good alone. We love you, Lord, but not as much as you love us with your irrevocable love. In Jesus' mighty matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs> amen, everybody. I love you all. I pray that this word has blessed you. I know that um please share this because this may somebody you know may be wondering or pondering why they are experiencing what they're experiencing. God loves you with the everlasting love. You are all beautiful. And God is reshaping and renaming you. In Jesus' name, I love you all. See you later.